Well, we're back. I, a Fallout lover, will be reacting to Synthetic Man, a professional circus clown who just so happens to be a Fallout hater. He made another video, this time covering every single episode, so presumably there will be less misinformation, less incorrect assumptions, and less Brenda takes in this one, right? Right? But don't be afraid, don't worry. I'm sure there will be the casual racism and buzzword barrage we've all come to expect from this lad. Now, before we get into this one, I highly recommend you check out the first video I did on this silly head. If you have not already, it really helps set the scene so you know exactly what kind of character we're dealing with here. Now, with all of that said, let the brain rotting commence. As promised, I'm back to review the rest of season one of the critically acclaimed Fallout TV show. And as promised as of yesterday, I'm back to review the clown's review of the critically acclaimed Fallout TV show. I'm sure the question on some people's minds is, well, does it get better? Believe it or not- The question on my mind is, did you get better? Do you make sense in this one? Let's see. Kind of, a little bit, in the sense that you can turn your brain off and if you don't care about the Fallout franchise, which is the case for most of the people who like this show, then you could just consume this mediocre slop and not really think much of it. This is about as superficial as an adaptation can possibly be. It has a bunch of visual references, and that's really all it takes to get normies on board with your show. You can absolutely take a massive dump on the lore, especially of the original games in New Vegas. That's fine, because most Fallout fans, if you can even call them fans, have only played Fallout 4, and so they don't care about the universe, they don't care about the characters, they don't even care about the theme. They don't even know what the theme is. People think it's about capitalism. The games literally tell you in the intro cutscene and the epilogue, war never changes. And yet somehow, now it's about capitalism bad. All right, so he's still uh, on this argument. How do we tell him that the show is still about war? And how do we tell him that the games still painted vault in a very bad picture? Unchecked capitalism often goes wrong. vault is the perfect picture of that. And it was shown from Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. I think you like the top-down ones, this guy. So I don't know why he's acting like the show is all about capitalism bad. <laughs> That's not what it's about. It's about war bad, rampant unchecked capitalism in the form of vault tech bad, just like the games. I don't get this argument, but this guy's arguments often are pretty out there. Let's continue but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. As some of you may have noticed, my last video got absolutely brigaded more than maybe I've ever seen before by Redditors, Discord groomers, outrage merchants on Twitter. <laughs> the list goes on. I'm sorry. I just, I have to appreciate him taking the time to screen cap and, you know, thumb up the rebel flag comment. You gotta, you gotta do it. On. That was probably the least organic my comment section has ever looked, ever. But if you've been watching this channel for a long time, you might be thinking, well, that's nothing too out of the ordinary. That's happened a bunch of times to this channel. Well, even reading these comments, I knew something fishy was going on. The first thing I noticed is that there were a lot of suspiciously similar comments copy-pasted in the reply chains of all the top comments in my video. Right, and they hear. would only ever address the same few points, whether it's the show breaking the lore or Shady Sands falling and then the nuke happening after it fell. Well, that's because that was your biggest issue with the first video you made. You were very, very butthurt about the Shady Sands lore. So that makes sense that most of the comments would be about that. And we'll address that later in this video. But none of those comments addressed anything I actually said in the video itself. I think the only comments talking about the video itself were people triggered. What is he talking about? That's literally what he was speaking about in the video. He was butthurt over Shady Sands, among other things like such as race mixing, which I'm sure he'll touch on about my comments regarding interracial couples. <laughs> there you go. Which is funny because I didn't even give my opinion on interracial couples. Okay, buddy. I just brought up statistics and pointed out how it's propaganda that they appear in all modern media. But I guess with Redditors being proud cuckolds, literally, <laughs> they feel the need to defend- <laughs> Oh man, this dude, he likes to project. That's something I've noticed. I've only watched two of his videos, the first one and now this one right here. And he 
was so upset in the first video he made on this about Maximus not being a big, strong, black alpha male. He wants his black men in media to be big, strong chads. That seems like cuckold behavior, if you ask me. To get upset that your black man isn't big and strong? That's weird. But he's going to sit here and call the people arguing with him cuckolds. All right, buddy. Sounds like projection to me. You do you. Fend Tyrone's honor as he plows their wife every night. The funniest one to me is there would always be a comment claiming this show doesn't break the lore. Not explaining how it doesn't, just saying that it doesn't. You know, all the nitpicks aside, I would say the biggest retcon of all is Shady Sands teleporting 200 miles across California into the heart of LA. The you know, honestly, this one's pretty fair. I'm not going to argue with him on this. Please excuse the cops outside. Uh, he's correct. Shady Sands is supposed to be near Vegas. I think it's like Sierra something. I don't know. Vegas geography. But it's closer to Vegas than it is California, if I'm not mistaken. But in the show, obviously, it's down uh, where the Boneyard is, I suppose. Boneyard doesn't yeah. even exist in this show. No. Shady Sands is now in L.A., which was not the case in Fallout 1. But to claim that it doesn't break the lore when you don't even know what the lore is, that's a fucking bot, dude. The All right, well, he just, you know, called himself a bot because he also doesn't know what the lore is. At least from the first video, he's shown numerous times he doesn't know what the lore is. But he is correct with Shady Sands being moved to California. Does that upset me? No. Do I understand if it upsets someone else? Yeah, sure. Second thing I noticed is that that video has way more comments than almost any video in the entire history of my channel. At the time of recording this, the video is just under 200,000 views and has 14,000 comments. For comparison, my Starfield video, which has 680,000, has 12,000 comments. And I'm sure some delusional person is going to say, well, it's just people arguing with each other. But these are my videos we're talking about. People are debating each other in the comments basically every time I give a negative take on a modern game. I mean, no yeah, sure. But I think the Fallout TV series, for some reason, is extremely polarizing online. So obviously there's going to be more arguments happening within the comments. Starfield? What's there to say about Starfield? In my opinion, it's garbage. In most people's opinion, it's garbage. And if you do like Starfield... You probably can understand why a lot of people don't enjoy it, so you're not going to sit there and get into this big, drawn-out war. But you have seen the brain damage that surrounds the Amazon Fallout TV show, for some reason, much from Synthetic Man himself and his viewers. So that makes perfect sense for there to be, like, an all-out war in the comments section. Even in my comments section on the video I made on this guy, like, there's a tons of comments going down. Do I think they're bots? No. So thank you for commenting and watching and liking, etc. Thank you for subscribing. If you are a bot, yo, handshake. Thanks for boosting me in the algorithm. I appreciate you. No, these are bots, actual AI chat bots that are being rolled out into YouTube comment sections. And so suspecting these were bots, I wrote a pinned comment. And of course I was inflammatory, but this is me we're talking about. So that's besides the point. But in the comment, I said, if you do not reply to one of these three questions posted, I will block you from this channel. And the whole point of that was to prove that you are not an AI chatbot. And what do you think happened? Well over 50 comments did not address any of the three <laughs> questions in the post. And yes, I, I don't think 50 is a, a big uh, sample size there, but okay. Some of these were just retarded Zoomers or millennial Redditors who are trying to throw a gotcha in. No, but yeah, no obviously that's what it's going to be. You're being combative, so people are going to be combative to you. Like, block me anyways. Yep, that's a bot for sure. Who hurt you? Yep, that's a bot. No, man. It's just people who think you're a clown. They don't care if they get banned. Oh, there were quite a few that are just straight up fucking chatbot responses that don't address anything in the post. My story has been corroborated by V, not the board, but the Romanian who's Sargon's buddy you might remember from back in the day. He also confirmed he was debating with bots on Twitter. You can check out the Archcast video reviewing the show. Their comments are full of bots. One thing I absolutely can't blame on bots, however, is the sheer number of people claiming I didn't pay attention to the first episode. Well, he, he certainly didn't. Like, that's not up for debate. Either he didn't pay attention 
or he purposely spread misinfo just for rage bait, which I think he is prone to, to be honest, which I'm still not fully convinced he isn't just like a rage bait account doing this to farm his commenters. Got a bunch of plot points wrong. Every single point I got wrong is because I only watched the first episode, which I stated in the last video. Yes, yeah, the but you also said spoilers that happened past the first episode in that video, which kind of defeats the purpose of only speaking about the first episode show has this thing called plot twists did you want me to read a cliff's notes of every episode plot no but we wanted you to have the media literacy to understand that there will be plot twists and not everything explain is explained in the first episode of a show like you were sitting here very butthurt that moldaver was one a brown woman and two the leader of raiders because how could a woman be the leader of raiders gee i wonder maybe because that was the ncr before I made the review are people not allowed to review just the first episode of a show look I know a lot of the noticers in my audience are not the least bit shocked by this and probably don't really care that much but this is fucking huge astroturfing has gotten completely out of control at this point I've seen plenty of paid marketers on other websites especially on reddit and 4chan but if now YouTube comments are just gonna be flooded with bots there's gonna be no real discussion anymore. It'll be so easy to create the illusion of a majority opinion. And speaking of which, there were many bot comments that basically said something along the lines of, how does it feel to be in the minority opinion? If 99.9% .9 of people think two plus two equals five, does that mean they're right? No, it doesn't, you fucking idiots. Call of Duty sells like 20 million copies a year, and we all know it's trash. I don't care if everyone likes the Fallout show, it's still garbage. So yeah, sorry if that was a little long, but I had to get this out of the way first. <laughs> How long was it? Six minutes? Five minutes? <laughs> Just so that my viewers know that there's a very good chance you'll be debating with either bots or redditors in bad faith who just hate me because I have controversial political opinions. There's nothing a redditor hates more than people who can think for themselves. Says the guy who is banning everyone who disagrees with them and is claiming everyone who disagrees with them is a bot. All right. If you say so. Alright, since I have to cover seven episodes in one video, I'm going to heavily condense the plot synopsis for each episode and give my thoughts on the major details. I don't really have time to nitpick everything and this video will be over an hour long and I'm not going to make this over an hour long, I promise you. So feel free to point out other <laughs> things- 10 seconds under, respect. Things you hated about the show, I'm sure there'll be plenty I don't hit in this video. Without further ado, here's the rest of Fallout Season All right, here Starting we go. Starting off with Episode 2, we have easily the worst episode of the show. It starts off where we see an Enclave research facility, I guess, and the one not evil Enclave scientist who spares a German Shepherd from incineration and takes it as his own. For some reason that is never explained, by the way. Maybe he doesn't want to burn dogs. Maybe he feels bad for burning dogs. Maybe he knows he's going to, you know, steal something and wants the dog as protection. Multitude of reasons. Could be any of them. He gets access to this extremely important artifact that is the MacGuffin that drives the entire plot of this show. And in fact, after this scene, the Enclave never shows up again in the show. Long story short, he has to escape from the facility. An auto turret shoots at him and misses every fucking shot as he's moving at two miles an hour. Look at how bad this looks. No, yeah, honestly, when I was watching this, I was like, that's pretty goofy. That looks dumb. Did I care that much? No, not really. But it does look dumb. I'll give him that. Just remember that people actually like this show every time you see shit like this. Yeah, that's that's a very minor thing in the show, bud. I don't think it's, you know, that big of a deal. If people still like the show because of that reason right there, I don't think it takes away too much. It's what, 15 seconds, not even? In the next scene, we see Lucy explore the desert wasteland of California. 
and the enclave scientist finds her at night conveniently and tries to explain to her that the wasteland is an inhospitable nightmare where the creatures there have adapted to become more lethal and she needs to adapt in kind this is one of many scenes where it shows lucy is incredibly naive about the state of the world and she needs to become hardened to survive here guess what she never does but I thought she was a Mary Sue. I thought she was super strong, super intelligent, no flaws. If she's naive and she doesn't learn, then she's not a Mary Sue. You got to be consistent, man. Well, maybe he doesn't call her a Mary Sue in this one. It's just he kept spamming that word in the first video. Let me be fair. We'll wait until he calls her a Mary Sue in this one. We'll see if he does it. Next scene, we're back with Maximus, and we soon learn that the knight that he's serving under is a pathetic weakling asshole and probably also racist. <laughs> Yet for some reason... Dude, that's so rich coming from this guy. I do love, like, the on-running gag with this dude that he's not a racist when he so clearly is. I even had one of his commenters come to my video and tell me he's not racist. And get this. One of the commenter's name, I don't remember it exactly, but it was something like the black conservative, thus proving that synthetic man is not racist because he has black viewers, just like he said in the first video. And the genius showrunners and Bethesda by extension thought it was a good idea to make the Brotherhood of Steel evil, arguably the most marketable part of the Fallout universe they made incredibly unlikable in this show. On the one hand, it did subvert my expectations completely. On the other, it just feels like yet another way to shit on the Fallout universe. And before some people straw man me, I'm not saying the Brotherhood of Steel should be like Fallout 3 where they're all good guy knights. Okay, okay. I was going to let them rock, but I think the lore master is mistaken once again, especially since he just said Fallout 3. For those who do not know, the Western Brotherhood of Steel and the Eastern Brotherhood of Steel are very different. In the show, it is the Western Brotherhood of Steel. Fallout 3 Brotherhood of Steel is obviously East Coast. The Western Brotherhood of Steel, they're isolationists. They don't like newcomers. You know, they stick to their own. They hoard technology. They're elitists. The East Coast Brotherhood of Steel are more of like the typical good guys you'd picture. A big hero in shining armor. They're more charitable. They're more welcoming. They don't hoard technology. But the Western Brotherhood of Steel... They're not those knights in shining armor. They're not that nice. So I don't know what he's going on about right here. Or whatever. I'm completely fine with the Brotherhood being xenophobic isolationists who preserve yeah. technology. Yeah, I, I mean, that's that's what the Western chapter is, dude. I thought you knew this, especially since you're a Fallout New Vegas elitist. You should have known that. That's great. Unfortunately, they never do that in this show. No, instead, Titus is a mega pussy. He gets taken out by a fucking Yao Guai, a guy in T-60 power armor, taken out by a bear. And because he was an asshole, Maximus decides not to save him and then steals his power armor and pretends to be him. This is one of many moments where Maximus is borderline evil in this show. But I guess it's okay because the guy was a racist and he <laughs> looks white. I do want to point out, he's not actually technically white, but what? I don't want to go into that. W what is this guy going on about? Is he claiming that this guy is Jewish as well? I know he likes to call Norm a uh, big schnoz. Is he implying this guy is Jewish because he has a strong nose bridge? I really can't tell with this guy. But of course, the question is, how the hell did Titus become a knight in the first place if you earn the power armor through acts of bravery? He was a complete pussy. But no, they don't explain it. And speaking of not explaining it, Maximus doesn't explain what happened to Titus. No, he just pretends that he died, and now he pretends to be Titus for almost the rest of the entire show. And there's no consequences for this, by the way. Um, I'm almost certain in episode 8, there are consequences. He def gets interrogated over having his knight's like red suit on, the suit you wear under the, uh, the power armor the end somehow the brotherhood conveniently forgets that he told uh. them that he died and titus lived oh and this is not the only i don't think they forgot that i think they know it was said and then when he shows up with the head they're like okay and then they check the head they see it's fake they bring him in the back and he says i swear i can show you the real head i swear and obviously the brotherhood cares about the head far more than they care about the weak knight titus like you just said come on man plot hole in this show 
In the next scene, we're back to Lucy, and we get a scene straight out of Borderlands where some idiot is living out in the middle of nowhere with no resources, somehow surviving, and he drinks all of Lucy's water. Haha, <laughs> so funny, she should stop trusting people, but she keeps doing it! Eventually, she heads over to the town of Philly that's actually located in a forest. I gotta say, this is one of the few things I kinda liked about the show. There's a settlement that isn't out in the middle of a wasteland with no resources like Megaton. And yes, there absolutely would be forests. Not only has it been well over 200 years, which is more than enough time for the radiation to be gone, but also it's not like every inch of the country was hit with nukes. So this actually makes a lot of sense. I kinda like this. Now, something I really, really don't like is that Lucy comes across this shop called Ma's Rarities, and this old woman here explains to us that vault dwellers represent rich people and surface dwellers represent poor people. Again, this once again proves fans of the show haven't actually played the fucking games. Either that or they just conveniently ignore obvious propaganda right in their fucking face. No, Vault Dwellers represent a time capsule of the 50s retro future culture. That's why- Brother, could you think critically for one second? So, someone on the surface clearly wasn't alive back then. Unless, you know, they're like, uh, Lucy's dad, I'm forgetting his name right now, Hank. Or anyone else that, you know, was cryogenically frozen, then brought back, or is a ghoul. They wouldn't know. What they would assume is you paid for a spot in the vault and you had to be well off to get a spot in the vault, which is true for a lot of vaults. Now, some of the vaults, as you know, they had weird experiments going on. Now, I'm sure those ones you didn't have to pay to get in. Maybe you did, but it was probably just like a lottery. And if you put out a vault tech lottery, people would love to sign up and, you know, apply and hopefully get accepted. But it makes perfect sense. And it is canon in Fallout lore that some vault spots were purchasable and we can assume it was a hefty price tag what are you talking about you're making no sense now like view it from her perspective a surface dweller think what she's gonna think about it oh i'm out here suffering i have no water everyone in the vault they're so privileged they were privileged 200 years ago and they're still thriving their legacy lives on their family's so happy down there because they had money like use your brain what are you talking about please just think critically for once they're all so naive and friendly and neighborly and they have to learn to survive in this inhospitable environment where everything's trying to kill you never at any point in any of the games is it implied that vault dwellers are rich people the only vaults that maybe come close to that are the control vaults and yes it's you need to pay for a spot in the vaults in some vaults this is canon what are you talking about man set up that vault 33 is control vault but it's not in reality and it's we'll not like the surface dweller is going to know all the lore about all the crazy experiments that go into on the vaults they can't get into the vaults what are you doing dude please to that plot twist when it comes the vast majority of vaults had horrific science experiments taken. yeah and like i just said she would have no idea and like i just said previously those would probably be you know filled by people filling out applications vault tech lotteries which i'm sure have a line down the block trying to get in etc etc this is all easily explained if you a play the games or b have the ability to think critically which is funny because he insults others for apparently not being able to do so place in them i wouldn't exactly call that a haven for the rich so of course the lady doesn't help her but conveniently the enclave scientist caught up with her and he reveals that he knows all about vault 33 and of course it turns out that he's the guy that she's looking for to find a way to get to her father of course the ghoul shows up and we get half of a pretty cool action scene where we get to see Walton Goggins blow away a bunch of mercs. And actually, yeah, it's pretty cool. He's got some kind of shotgun firing, I guess, armor piercing Sabo rounds. And no, I'm not going to nitpick that. It's Fallout. Obviously, the guns aren't realistic. And Bethesda has proven time and time again. They know nothing about guns. But it looks pretty cool. I'll say that. One thing that does kind of bother me about this scene is that for some reason, ghouls are now basically immortal zombies. If you don't shoot them in the head, they don't die. That is a pretty big retcon. Is... And don't try to tell me it isn't one because it's never been established 
that you have to shoot them in the head. Even if you don't think gameplay is canon, which I think is just absurd, but we're not going to get into that. This is clearly a retcon. I'll is that true in the show? Did, did they say that or is he just saying it's implied that you need to shoot a ghoul in the head? Because I did not come to that understanding on my own and I don't remember hearing that in the show. I just think that ghouls are hard to kill. And in the game, ghouls are hard to kill. If you shoot off their arm, they keep coming. You shoot off their leg, they like cower in fear. In some instances, if you shoot off their head, they'll still keep fighting. At least feral ghouls. So, I, I'm not sure what he's going on about here. If they did say you can only kill a ghoul by headshot in the show, then yeah, I'd agree that's a retcon. But I don't personally remember that. I think it's just ghouls are adorable. Also, in the chaos, the ghoul stabs dog meat, and yes, I'll be calling the dog dog meat because Walton Goggins himself calls the dog dog meat. Near Rare the synthetic man W. I also call the dog dog meat. End of the show, so might as well be. But don't worry, the dog doesn't die. Now, this is where the episode goes to shit again. Lucy gives this grand speech, which is pretty cringe, shoots the ghoul with the trank dart. We get an admittedly pretty good line. Yeah, I love this line. Well, now, that is a very small drop in a very, very large bucket of drugs. And then Maximus shows up to save the day, and they fucking turned power armor into Iron Man armor. It looks so stupid. And if you think this looks bad, just watch this, guys. Come on, that's something straight out of a Bollywood film. Not to mention, Maximus is an idiot. Why doesn't he, he have is. a gun? He had a gun in a previous scene. It didn't break. So I've said this in previous videos. Pretty sure Maximus is an idiot savant. So that scene makes perfect sense. You know, he doesn't know how to use the armor. He just jumped in. He has no training. And like when we ignore that, also, he, he kind of has a low int build. That's the vibes he puts off. In the midst of this really shitty Marvel movie fight, the old lady grinds this metal boot onto the Enclave dude's leg. This is gruesome. Which just feels like straight shock value because it doesn't even save him, by the way. And then the ghoul shows up in the room, gives Dog Meat a stim pack, and now all of a sudden they're buddies. And of course he uses Dog Meat to track down the Enclave guy. The episode ends back in the middle of the desert again. The Enclave dude is starting to bleed out. And so he tells Lucy to chop off his head because the thing they need is in his head. Again, this is done purely for shock value and his idiocy. The thing in his neck does not need to be in his head to work. So they carry around a fucking rotting head for the entire season. No I guess that's fair. He could have said it's in my neck, just, you know, cut my neck, find what you need, etc., etc. But maybe it needed to be preserved safely in case, you know, maybe it's fragile. I have no idea. Neither does Synthetic Man. He said he wasn't going to nitpick. That sounds like a nitpick to me, but I digress. Nobody thinks to dig the chip out of his neck. Dude, they turn Fallout into Borderlands. You're going to see that more and more throughout this show. This is straight up fucking Borderlands cringe, unfunny garbage. And that's episode two. I give it a three out of ten. The only reason it isn't even lower than does that have, is because... Does he have the nude mod on here? Is that why he keeps blurring the floor? Walton Goggins is pretty entertaining as the ghoul. And honestly, he only gets better from here. Everything else about this episode was awful. I feel like if you have any standards for television at all, you would have stopped watching this show after this episode. It was that bad. Now on to episode three. It begins with a flashback before the war as we see more of the life of Cooper Howard before he became the ghoul. It turns out he was in fact an actor for Westerns and his wife is an executive at Vault Tech. It's good to see even in the alternate future of the Fallout universe, we still have diversity <laughs> hires in the highest position of power. Back in the present, we see that the ghoul has come across the corpse of the Enclave scientist, and we get yet another huge retcon. Ghouls now have to take a special serum to avoid going feral. In the original game, the reason why ghouls were 
hated or at least were outcast from society is because they were ticking time bombs. They could go feral at any moment. I can't remember if it's ever quite confirmed, but it's definitely suspected that extended exposure to radiation eventually rots their brain completely and they go feral. But no, now in the show, there's a special serum that they have to take periodically to avoid going feral. Yeah, this is fair. That's obviously not in any of the games. And when I was watching, I'm like, what is that? Like, is it, is it just jet? Because, like, you know, an inhaler. And it also makes the jet noise, like, later on. But I don't think it's jet. Is it Radaway? Doesn't look like Radaway. Is it Radex? Doesn't look like Radex. So no drug really matches, per se. It was probably just made up for the show. And if you are a hardcore lore master, I also understand getting upset at that. That's fair. I know there's going to be some idiot that's going to say that this is not a retcon, but there were plenty of ghouls that survived over 200 years. What is it that happened in the past 15 after New Vegas that ghouls now all of a sudden have to take a serum? No, this is a fucking retcon. After a pointless scene with Lucy, we're back to Maximus, and this is the scene I mentioned last episode where he lies to the Brotherhood, pretending to be Titus, and says that Maximus died. Again, there's no consequences for this. Again, he gets questioned. <laughs> I, I don't know what this guy's going on about. He keeps saying consequences, so maybe he's mad that, I don't know, Maximus wasn't killed for betrayal. But Maximus was their only hope at finding the real head. So, I don't know why he's crying. It never comes up again. After It, it does. <laughs> Brother, what do you mean? We'll see if he brings it up in episode 8. I assume he like made these right after watching everything, so... A borderline pointless scene where he has to sell one of his teeth to afford repairing a part. A bunch of raiders tried to... They're not really raiders, more like thugs. Raiders only show up twice in this show, yes, really. ...steal his power armor, and he gets his ass beat, again, because he lost his gun off screen. He does manage to beat up most of them, including crushing one of their heads with the power armor. And then the Brotherhood of Steel arrives, giving him a new squire. And of course, it's one of the guys who beat him up in the first scene he shows up. And so Maximus, being one of our main protagonists, a hero we can all look up to, nearly crushes his fucking head! Dude, I couldn't believe this. Is he supposed to be a villain? <laughs> Man, you can tell these guys got beat up in high school and this is their revenge fantasy because Maximus continues the cycle of bullying, doing exactly what Titus did to him. When we get back to Lucy- Well, I mean, that's, that's the whole theme, right? The bully bullied the bully and then Thaddeus is sad that Maximus didn't get to bully a different bully, et cetera, et cetera. Well, not bully a bully, bully an innocent person, and then the innocent person becomes a bully. That's the cycle, and it, it gets explained later on. I'm now realizing I neglected to mention what she's actually doing. She's trying to deliver the head to the raider chick, Moldaver, whose real identity is really stupid, but we'll get to that at the end. Anyway, she comes so across- So first, it was stupid that Moldaver could be a leader of a pack of raiders because she's a silly brown woman. But now it's silly that she's the head of the NCR, at least that branch. Meanwhile, she was a very successful scientist who made the life-saving technology that is implanted in the head. Okay. ...across a lake and is attacked by a gulper, which you may remember from the Far Harbor DLC for Fallout 4. Now they looked completely different in that. Now they're giant pink salamanders with fingers in their mouths. I was hoping for a Mire Lurk, to be honest. For some reason. This makes them seem more like an FEV mutant. Why the hell would radiation make you grow human fingers in your mouth? Whatever. Anyway, it eats the head. Of course, the ghoul catches up with her and decides to use her as bait while he monologues about how ineffective torture is. This is probably the scene where I ended up liking this guy because he's definitely a villain. I don't know. Now, yeah, me too. When he stabbed dog meat, I was real butthurt about it. But in this scene, you can't help but like, I'm like, what he's doing is messed up, but he's so cool. Shout out the ghoul. Attempting to write an anti-hero, but he's definitely not. He's a villain, but he's a good villain. 
Walton Goggins is a great actor, and I think they were trying to go for a New Vegas vibe with the cowboy thing, but to me, it honestly feels more like a character straight out of the New Vegas Bounties mods developed by Some Guy 2000, and those are all great if you haven't played them. Despite being some of the oldest mods for New Vegas, they're still probably the best. And that's how you know he's a real OG alpha original Fallout fan, because he played that old mod. Back at Vault 33, we get our third concurrent plot throughout the season, the mystery behind this triple vault system. I gotta say, it was actually pretty intriguing. For a while, this was my favorite part of the show. Yeah, me too. I loved all of Norm's scenes. They were so good. I got so happy when they panned to Norm, the official fourth main character. Let it be known reason I kept watching big schnoz actually turns out to be a pretty good character unfortunately at least he's come around to our boy norm aka big schnoz if you're brain dead they really ruin it at the end so I'm not going to cover it episode by episode we'll talk about the whole side plot when it wraps up at the end okay I after guess. we get a scene dedicated to Maximus just abusing his bully we get another subtle retcon. The bully implies that the Brotherhood of Steel is going to wipe out ghouls from existence. Did the writers confuse the Brotherhood with the Enclave? Killing ghouls has never been an objective of the Brotherhood. Where the hell did this come from? And don't even tell me he pulled this out his ass just because he's supposed to be a racist. Though, actually, knowing these writers, maybe that is exactly... I mean, I'll be honest with you, I can't pull up a 100% fact to disprove what he's saying, that the Brotherhood would never say they want to kill all ghouls, but once again, I think our buddy here keeps conflating the Western Brotherhood of Steel with the Eastern Brotherhood of Steel. The Eastern Brotherhood of Steel is welcoming, they're charitable. The Western Brotherhood of Steel, like I said, they're isolationists, they're elitists, they don't like others. Ghouls are probably worse than just a normal other to them. But I digress. ...to what they're implying, but anyway, back to the ghoul and Lucy. The gulper eventually takes bite, nearly voring Lucy, but of course it gets away, and this is where another major plot hole happens. The ghoul says, gulpers digest slowly. He then makes a joke about side quests. Wasteland's got its own golden receiver. <laughs> Oh, what's that? Thou shalt get sidetracked by bullshit every goddamn time. <laughs> Ooh, wow, haha, ha, so meta. And then he leaves to go sell Lucy's organs. I'm not making this up. That is the sequence of events. I seriously have to ask at this point, if you're a real human and you like this show, did you get high before watching? Were you drinking? Did you get vaxxed three or four times? <laughs> How the hell could you like this show? So oh back to Maximus and the... What, what's the issue? I'm not exactly following. He's upset that the ghoul went to go sell Lucy's organs because he needs money for his drugs? All right, man. Squire, we get an incredibly awkward scene where Maximus gets the Squire to explain why he bullied him. But obviously, since he's still pretending to be Titus, he does it by trying to get him to say something horrible about him. And this somehow leads him to explaining that the only reason he bullied Maximus is because he himself was bullied until he showed up. And so he just redirected the bullying to Maximus. And so it's and now Maximus was redirecting the bullying onto him. Perfect circle. But now, you know, Maximus feels bad supposed to be this big like oh see this guy's not so bad and so then maximus starts treating him better unfortunately this goes in a really stupid direction later but i actually kind of like this scene it felt much more mature than the rest of this show but it was handled somewhat poorly oh and i know i said i wasn't gonna bring up the vault 33 subplot but I do want to point out that a black guy who I guess is an engineer says that the water chip... He wasn't going to bring it up, but he just had to point out that they showed another black person. ...is broken, and they never bring it up again. So that was just a completely pointless reference to Fallout 1, which is funny because if you've played Fallout 1, you know that this show completely shits all over the story. I think it was also meant to show that people from Vault 33 are not fit to be overseer because they're just talking to that guy like in the open about a very serious issue. With all of the retcons. You want me to name another big one? The master, the villain of the original game who was turning people into super mutants, was finding those people from vaults. 
and his headquarters was located near the boneyard. It would have been in spitting distance of Vault 33. You're telling me that he never found this vault that was out in the open. He never managed to get inside and mutate all those people into super mutants. Speaking of super mutants, there are none in this show. The West Coast canonically- Yeah, I, I did want to see a super mutant. I was a little sad. Maybe we'll see one in uh, season two. Also a death claw. I thought a death claw was in the cave, but it was just a Yao Guai. I think that's what they were like, supposed to be hinting at, but we shall see. I am praying for a death claw in season two. Has intelligent super mutants, unless they all got killed by the Brotherhood of the Enclave or something. But no, they are never mentioned in this show. One of the most iconic things in the Fallout franchise isn't in the Fallout TV show. I could see the West Coast Brotherhood, you know, trying to eradicate super mutants for sure. Yo. Okay, enough tangents. Let's wrap up this episode. Eventually, Maximus catches up to the head. He saves his squire from being devoured alive, yanks out its guts, and now they have the head. And for the final scene, it cuts back to the ghoul and Lucy, and to just spit in my face in particular, and all the shills who fucking lied in my first review. The ghoul drinks water directly in front of Lucy. And you know what's funny? In a later episode, he eats food, too. Uh -huh. Ghouls need water to survive. This has been established multiple times in the series, and it's now established in the show, and yet he was buried underground four years with no water or food. Ex well, when you're in... Hold on, let me hear what he's going to say. Explain it, shills. Okay, Ex okay, okay. I, I will, I will explain. Don't shoot. So... He was upset in episode one about there being like IV bags in the grave. He's like, do people come out and switch it every now and then? Like maybe because he's like, you know, a highly coveted bounty hunter. Maybe they keep him under there until they need to bring him out for a job. But when you're in a coma, you're not eating food, dude. You have an IV. He had an IV. That will count as sustenance for him. And, you know, just because you have the ability to eat or drink water does not mean you need to do those things when you're out on the surface. You know what you do do when you're out on the surface as a ghoul and you were just in a fight? You would go get some radiation. Because what does radiation do to ghouls, Mr. Lore Master? It heals them. And his water was irradiated, as you can tell when he gives some to Lucy after. He tells her to drink out of there, like whatever that little trough was. And she's like, oh God, it's radiated. And also he fills up his canteen with more irradiated water. And he drinks it because radiation heals ghouls. Hope that helped, head pat little man. Plain it. And for the final scene of the episode, we're back in the past again, and we see that Cooper inspired the Vault Boy. Yes, even though the Vault Boy has blonde hair. No, it was Walton <laughs> Goggins' character throwing up. Brother, I thought you said you weren't going to nitpick. Yeah, man, a superstar Hollywood actor of the heyday would be the poster boy. For the vault boy the blueprint yes of course that makes sense what's wrong with you did you want them to make the vault boy a balding dude that wouldn't fly with all due respect most likely so they just took the pose come on man up a thumbs up that inspired the vault boy wow what a great addition to the fallout lore all right episode three gets a four out of ten it was definitely better than the last one i suppose if you turned off your brain completely and didn't care about the fallout lore at all it's kind of watchable but it certainly isn't good by any metric on to episode four this one is supposed to be all about lucy losing her innocence and seeing how horrific the wasteland is it starts off with the ghoul taking her to some other ghoul guy who's about to turn feral and i'm just gonna call him cooper for the rest of the show the ghoul is such a stupid fucking name cooper shoots him before he goes feral and then starts eating him he's not even feral do you think he liked the name the courier do you think he liked the name the lone wanderer do you think he liked the name the vault dweller since he loves old fallout so much i feel like he does so it's interesting how much he hates the ghoul yeah he'll fucking eat other ghouls what the hell but I guess I finally figured out why Zoomers like this show. He eats ass. Come on, Vaulty. Ass jerky don't make itself. In the next scene, we see Lucy has gotten so thirsty that she's willing to drink irradiated water. Mm -hmm. And conveniently, Cooper starts to turn feral because he ran out of serum, I guess. So Lucy makes a run for it. 
but he catches her with his lasso, but then she ends up biting his finger off. And so to get even, he slices one of her fingers off and she barely even reacts, dude. What is this terrible acting? And you guys say she's not a Mary Sue. Oh, and once again- <laughs> There it is. First Mary Sue in the video. Let's go. I wanna briefly talk about Vault 33 because Sweet Home Alabama ends up hooking up with the blonde chick after her husband died and she's pregnant with his child and she ends up giving birth and Alabama raises another man's child. Now I know why Redditors like this show. But before I start saying stuff that's gonna get me banned, let's get back to Lucy and Cooper. He ends up delivering her to a super duper mart that functions as a organ harvesting clinic. As soon as she gets inside, he passes out. I guess that's part of the process of becoming feral now. And she ends up meeting a Mr. Handy and she acts like she's never seen one before. I mean, I can understand her vault not having any of them, but really? She knows about power armor. Whatever, we get another kind of stupid scene where the Mr. Handy sews a rotting finger that was just sitting in a drawer for who knows how long, not frozen, onto her hand and it just works. Then the Mr. Handy rolls her out to the two owners of this legitimate business and they're straight out of idiocracy. There's no guards here, by the way, either. These guys own like more than a dozen slaves, yet they couldn't afford any raider guards or mercs or anything to that effect. Paradise Falls from Fallout 3 had to have at least 20 slavers in there who were fully armed and competent. But, you know, in the Fallout TV show, it's just two retards in their robot. Because, you know... Well, it's obviously a very secure door. Because the ghoul is capable of killing everyone in there, right? But he still does it the proper way of trying to sell the organs. So, I don't know, man. I guess you could say I'm here to sell organs from a ghoul. And then the ghoul himself walks in. I don't know if they would accept him if that was the speech. But this is, once again, nitpicky, in my opinion. No, no one would be smart enough to try and actually raid a place full of supplies. No, especially not after the NCR collapsed. There definitely wouldn't be raiders trying to get supplies. No. Also, if I'm not mistaken, I know they're not in there, but the Super Duper Mart is protected by the two dudes who end up capturing the ghoul later on. Oh, and it gets even dumber. When the Mr. Handy takes her to the surgery room, it doesn't sedate her, and she just kicks its fucking arm? A 90-pound woman kicked the robot's arm and then just rolled off of the bed. Then she uses a defibrillator to shock the thing. Anyway, she rolls out the Mr. Yeah, Handy. Yeah, I mean, what's what's the problem? Would you like her to just die? I Like, it's a, it's a TV show, man, you know? And she's one of the main characters. Do you want her to just die? And yes, a robot program to do one thing. Let's just, let's pretend we're in the moment for a second. Let's pretend. Mr. Handy, they move pretty slow. They're obviously like a little bit dumb. Yeah, a 90 pound woman, I'm not even sure if she's 90 pounds, but a 90 pound woman would be able to kick a lanky robot arm. They would be able to do that. And it would likely move the robot. Physics. What's the beef, man? I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You're just a bitch. You're a whiny little bitch for some reason. It's okay, man. It's not that deep. Andy, to the two idiots, they make a joke about her holding a air conditioner hostage. While they don't draw their guns, because she's clearly no threat to them, she reveals that she filled its hose with a Braxo cleaner, which is basically just supposed to be bleach, but the show acts like it's hydrochloric acid. Either way, she gets them to release all of the slaves, including feral ghouls, which why the hell do they have feral ghouls as slaves? Don't Gee, maybe they weren't feral when they were first put in, as you can tell by the grandma ghoul who's in there, who looks super sad, who then obviously, you know, succumbs to becoming feral and attacks anyway. What is, I, I can't with this guy. The first one was way more funny. This one's just, it's brain rotting. It's pure brain rotting even try to tell me that ghoul organs are good for something and obviously See, i don't think they are which is why i don't think cooper could you know walk in and be like hey i'm a ghoul got some organs let me in you can't use feral ghouls for any slave labor this doesn't make any sense did anyone watching this show use their brain you clearly didn't little bro
any moment. Whatever, the ghouls and the idiots manage to take each other out, except for one woman who's barely holding it together. Of course, she ends up going <laughs> feral and Lucy. You think he'd be able to put two and two together. So he knows about like the grandma ghoul, who's not quite yet feral, but then becomes feral. So you think he'd be able to realize that, oh, maybe everyone in there wasn't originally feral. Maybe they got locked in and they became feral over time. So he has to pick up the 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout. Make sure to get your replica in the Bethesda store. You know, it's funny. There was a bot that actually tried to say this show was made with love because they made a replica 10 millimeter pistol from Fallout 4. This isn't even the original design for the 10 millimeter pistol. No, this is the Fallout 4 redesign. In fact, all of the iconic Fallout weapons are the Fallout 4 designs. And look, I realize this is... Gee, I wonder why completely subjective and up to personal taste but i just think the fallout 4 gun designs are ugly so as we just saw lucy who i think there's a lot to hate about fallout 4 mainly the dialogue options and for me the building all that stuff i wasn't into it i don't like power armor i don't like building and i didn't like the dialogue options but i did like fallout 4 overall totally but the weapon design they were fine they looked good not a mary sue girl boss single mary sue number two took out this organ harvesting operation and then gives Cooper a vial of the ghoul serum to save him. After she leaves, Cooper heads inside and raids all of their supplies and watches one of his old cowboy movies. And I guess since he doesn't need the bounty from the Enclave guy's head anymore, he drops out of the plot for a while. And that's episode four. Again, I'd probably have to give it another 4 out of 10. It was barely watchable. Again, this show is dumb as hell, but at the very least, Walton Goggins acting is very entertaining to watch, but pretty much everything else about the show sucks. Now is he aware that this is a fictional program? Is he also aware that you can play as a girl in the game and you can be a Mary Sue in the game? It's just so odd that he would nitpick Lucy being able to kick the robot's lanky arm away. I don't know, man. He's a weird guy. Now on to episode five. The first scene in this episode is incredibly stupid. Maximus reveals to his squire that he's not in fact Titus. And so Maximus is like, listen, we got to get our story straight before we report back to the Brotherhood. But no, the squire guy is like, they're going to kill you. Why the hell would they kill him, especially if he hadn't lied in the first place? But even though he did lie, he could just say that Titus died honorably in combat, and so he had to take up the power armor to finish the mission. Why would they kill him for that? They're not even supposed to be here in the West Coast. They were eliminated by the new California Republic. And by the end of New Vegas, depending on who you sided with, they were either absorbed into the NCR or wiped out completely by like all of the other factions. I'm pretty sure the Mr. House ending of New Vegas is the canon one. That's really something I should have mentioned in the first video, but my point is it doesn't really make any sense to bring them back just to make them look this bad. Anyway, Max is being clearly an evil psycho stomps on the squire's foot, crushing it, and it looks horribly mangled when they show it later. But he manages to get behind him and removes the fusion core from the power armor, which of course the showrunners doing zero research think that you get locked inside the armor when it runs out of power. Can you imagine in Fallout 4 if when you ran out of fusion cores, you just got soft locked? And don't- Well, I think there- Well, let's see what he's gonna say. He said don't- Tell me that's just a gameplay mechanic. That makes no fucking sense. All right, so yeah, I obviously can't confirm or deny that when you run out of battery in a power armor, it just locks yourself in. Like, GG's, you're screwed. But in the fashion that Thaddeus took out the fusion core with a special little key there, put it in and then pulled out the fusion core, that might lock the suit. That makes sense to me personally. The fact that the Brotherhood always have a squire with them would make sense, you know, help them out of the suit every now and then. Also, if the battery just drains, like the fusion core is running out, clearly there's an indicator, you know, clearly they would know to get out of this suit before it's all doom and gloom. But I can see where he's coming from. I guess I can respect that argument, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. And I think it is important to note that the fusion core didn't just run out. It was forcefully pulled out. 
I think that's important. Even in the dystopian world of Fallout, you don't think someone would have brought up at some point that you get locked inside power armor if it runs out of power? Well, yeah. it didn't run out of power. The fusion core was taken out entirely. Again, more bad writing and retcons, but no, the show never breaks the canon. The show never breaks the canon. I'm not an AI chatbot, I swear. Anyway, the next morning, a bunch of rad roaches tried to devour him alive, but Lucy just so happens to find him. Guys, how big is this wasteland? It's supposed to be three blocks? And yes, I know Lucy has a tracker on the head, but the squire already left hours ago. What are the chances she would pass down the exact same path where the head was the previous night? Whatever, I guess I'm nitpicking again. So He is. I'm glad he's self-aware. After a really long, pointless conversation, Lucy decides to trust him. Well, Ma he, he's not actually self-aware, but he was self-aware in that moment. Maximus is like the one guy she should trust because he literally saved her life. But anyway, they start traveling together and she asks him what happened in the last 200 years. And this idiot thought that when she mentioned the bombs falling, that she was referring to the nuke dropped on Shady Sands and not the world ending. So we've established that the Brotherhood of Steel is not only debatably evil now, but they don't even teach initiates basic history. Well, Event well, yeah, the Brotherhood is a weird, like, quasi-religious cult. You know, the Western Brotherhood in this installment is a weird quasi-religious cult. It makes sense. Eventually, the pair come across two suspicious figures on a bridge, and Maximus, being smart for once, says we should draw our gun because we can't trust anyone, right? Because Lucy just told us that she doesn't trust people anymore, right? No, this fucking dumb bitch doesn't want to draw her gun, and oh, big shock, they turn out to be fiends. Yes, they're trying to throw a bone to New Vegas fans after shitting down their throat multiple times. And one of the fiends gets a shot off on Maximus. He loaded a rotten tooth into his gun, which I'm not even going to get into that, but whatever. The point is, he gets injured because you used to be able to launch teddy bears with the fat man. That's pretty normal for a fallout, I'd say, to shoot a rotten tooth. Because Lucy's an idiot. The next Okay, he uh he loves to call Lucy a Mary Sue, but he completely ignores the fact that she is an idiot. Like he just called her there. If she's a Mary Sue, how is she also an idiot? If it wasn't for Maximus, who's a weak black man in your opinion, how did he save her from those fiends? Without Maximus, she dies right there. Which you should love. Because you were just very upset that Lucy managed to kick away a lanky robot arm. Next up, we finally get to the biggest fuck you in the entire show where we see the giant oh crater boy. where Shady- I can't wait for season two just to, like, once and for all, put an end to the Shady Sands debate and narrative. I cannot wait. Shady Sands used to be. It was populated with 34,000 people. And as they reveal in the later scene, it looks like they basically restored civilization back to the wasteland, just like I said in my review of episode one. And like I mentioned in the intro, this is not where Shady Sands is located. Shady Sands is not in LA. It's like at least a hundred miles outside of it. They could have looked this shit up on the wiki, man. There's no excuse. They didn't do any research. And Wait, is it Sierra, California, not Sierra, Nevada? I don't know, I just feel like it's Sierra something. That's all I remember. Todd Howard hates what Fallout's really about, and that's a post-post-apocalypse where humanity is trying to rebuild after the world ended. And by the time of Fallout New Vegas, they succeeded. The New California Republic dominated the state. They effectively brought the Old World America back though arguably even more corrupt, and it was starting to fall apart at the time of New Vegas. If you paid attention to the dialogue from a lot of the characters, especially Caesar, a big part of his motivation with the Legion was seeing the gradual decline of the NCR. But instead of seeing that happen naturally due to the results of the second battle of Hoover Dam, no, Bethesda just fucking nuked it back to square one. Any Legion supporters, by the way? I feel like that was a rare faction to pick, but on my first New Vegas playthrough, I was Legion all day. Somehow, just destroying the capital city wiped out an entire empire across the state. Why did Bethesda do this? Well, a lot of people speculate it's because of the long-running rumor that they hate Fallout New Vegas because they didn't make it, Obsidian did. And Honestly, 
I'll like moderately co-sign this. I do think Bethesda is a little bit butthurt that Obsidian made the best 3D Fallout. A lot of the people who worked on Fallout New Vegas worked on Fallout 1 and 2. And so, of course, to no one's surprise, the original creators of the series did a much better job than the hacks at Bethesda. And Fallout New Vegas is still considered by most to be the greatest game in the series. So Bethesda has been butthurt about this for over a decade, and this show was finally their opportunity to say fuck you to all the real fans of Fallout. That's exactly what happened, and that is why I fucking despise the people who like this show. This guy takes things very, very personally, huh? Fallout died with Fallout 4, and this is just pissing on the corpse. See, I'd say Fallout died with Fallout 76, and unfortunately for this guy, Fallout was resurrected with the Amazon TV show. I already said earlier that I played Fallout 4, and while there were complaints to be had, overall I liked it. It was a good game. Great game, even, in my opinion. Oops. In the last couple scenes of the show, Lucy and Maximus take refuge inside of Vault 4, and it's another vault that has somehow managed to survive over 200 years. Do the writers even understand the appeal of the vaults in the Fallout games? Discovering the horrendous experiments that either killed or mutated everyone inside is one of the most fun parts of those games. Is... what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> That's the entire purpose of this vault. The terrible experiments. Games. And while it's obvious that some experiments went down here, they subvert your expectations, I'll put it at that. And that okay, if he was going to say that in the next sentence, why did he even cry and get butthurt about them finding a vault that wasn't full of monstrosities off rip? Dude, think critically. You love to insult others for not thinking critically. You need to do it yourself, man. That's the end of episode five. I can't really give this- See, stuff like that is what makes me think he really might just be grifting on these clowns and like farming them for ad revenue. The real rating, because I skipped about half Too the Too many inconsistencies. Episode, since about half of it was the Vault 33 subplot. And I will say that half of the episode was definitely better. But showing where Shady Sands got nuked is such a massive fuck you to the real fans of Fallout. And I can't really rate this in good faith. It ruins the entire series. Episode 6 begins with another flashback showing Cooper Howard advertising for the vaults. He's then approached by an executive named Bud and they start talking about T-45 power armor and apparently now there's a new fatal flaw with the armor that has never come up before. Definitely not a retcon, the show never breaks the canon, as the bots say. And of course this is foreshadowing for one of the dumbest scenes in the show in the finale, we'll get to that later. I also want to point out that the T-51 is never mentioned in the show. In fact, did you know that China is never mentioned by name in the show? They only ever referred to them as the Reds. Gee, do you think that's a coincidence? Actually, to the morons who like this show, yeah, they probably do think it is. Anyway, this Corpo guy is incredibly obnoxious. The only reason he exists is a setup for a later twist, which is also stupid. The next scene is a corporate party at Cooper's house, and we get to meet the voice of Cogsworth and all the Mr. Handys. Then they talk about communists for a while, and we get quite possibly the dumbest- Shouldn't he be happy that they were talking about communists? That's mentioning China indirectly. I guess that's not good enough for him, though. Theme of the show that keeps getting pushed from this point forward, that you can make a massive profit off of the end of the world. Now, if you don't take this literally, there is an argument to be made that you can make a lot of money off of selling the apocalypse, especially if you're a gun store. But that's not what they're going for. They are very literal with this, as you'll see later. Then in the next scene, we see a couple sheriffs have captured Cooper, and they say- Nah, you know what? Let me let him go. He said he'll speak on it later. We'll let it rock for now. They work for the government. Now, I thought this might be a setup for the Enclave to come back. So, yeah, no you see, these guys were the ones who were supposed to be protecting the Super Duper Mart. So they weren't there in the moment, but clearly they come by and check on it every now and then.
This is a complete nothing burger, as you'll see later in this episode. And now we're back to Lucy and Maximus again in Vault 4. I'm going to very briefly sum up everything that happens in this vault, because it's complete filler. You could cut this entire part of the show out and lose nothing of value. All right, so your complaint was that the whole purpose of the vaults, when you find them in-game, is to see the insane, crazy experiments and how sick and twisted it is. And when it's in the show, you're now calling it just filler lore garbage that you're going to gloss over? All right, I guess. But first, I have to show you quite possibly the worst dialogue I've ever seen in a TV show. Oh, no. Yo, hear me out? Fair. This was uncomfortable AF, which I think was the point. But I didn't enjoy watching it. You mean use my cock? It's, it's just such a terrible line. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that weird thing could happen. What weird thing? Well, it's just for some guys, not me. Uh, but for some guys, you know, when they make it move, <laughs> it gets all big and hard like a big pimple, and then it pops. And they say it could happen to anybody, but it's still, it's, it's gross. The Brotherhood of Steel doesn't teach kids about <laughs> sex. This is what I'm saying. They're obviously supposed to be evangelical Christians. Yeah, man. They're they're a weird quasi-religious cult. They teach him about sex. They just teach him it's bad. Or probably also racist. This is so fucking transparent. But Thesta is so stupid that they let this go through. Okay, anyway, as for the Vault 4 plot. Long story short, we get to see the infamous chalkboard that explains what happened to the NCR. Shady Sands mysteriously fell, quote unquote, in 2277, and this has been confirmed by Todd Howard himself, that this is not the nuke being showed in the chalkboard. No, of course, the nuke dropped at an unknown date that's not written on the chalkboard. And this is totally intentional because, you know, every other point on the chalkboard has a year next to it, but not the nuke, right? No one knows when the nuke dropped because the show has to be canon, which means that it couldn't have dropped in 2277 because obviously every goddamn NCR soldier in New Vegas in 2281 would have fucking <laughs> mentioned their capital getting nuked. So no, mysteriously, sometime in the 2280s, Shady Sands got nuked, but before that, they quote-unquote fell. Even though, again, not a single NPC in New Vegas describes Shady Sands having fallen, especially not, you know, Caesar, the guy who monologues about how the NCR is slowly becoming more corrupt and collapsing. No, he wouldn't talk about Shady Sands falling. No, no, it's almost like all the people defending this didn't play the game whatever like i said reasonably fair upset behavior right it's okay to be upset about that i think if you're like a new vegas diehard and you're really really upset that it doesn't line up with the dialogue in game okay but todd howard said it's canon i know he hates todd howard i understand the writer said it's canon i know he hates the writers i understand but just wait for season two. I'm sure it will be explained perfectly. I know a lot of people are having debates surrounding Shady Sands right now. And there's nothing I can say that will sway anyone one way or the other. But as it is written in the stones right now, Shady Sands fell. And then afterwards, after the fall, it was nuked. Much like the fall of the Roman Empire, it wasn't boom, dead instantly. The fall is gradual. The nuke was, you know, the period. Stamp it out entirely. That's how Todd Howard is writing it off. That is how the writers are writing it off. That is how I am writing it off. That is how most people who aren't taking things personally are writing it off. We shall see in season two how that goes. But if he's upset about it, if you're upset about it, I can understand. That's a fair one. Anyway, I gotta move on. So, of course, the residents of this vault, at least some of them, are mutants. The overseer has one eye. There's a guy with a nose on his forehead. Of course, nobody ever brings it up because they have to build the tension like they're gonna get captured and experimented on. Well, actually, no, they completely subvert your expectations. As it turns out, the original residents of the vault were mega evil Nazi scientists 
who did the weirdest experiments ever, including... Which was a throwback to one of the flashback um, ghoul scenes, or Cooper scenes. ...making a woman give birth to baby gulpers, who then devour her alive. But eventually, the lab rats rose up and killed all the evil scientists, and now they just accept surface dwellers into their vault. And these surface dwellers have now become cultists for Moldaver. They worship her as some kind of god or some shit, and Same this is here. never followed up on, by the way. What, what do you mean it's never followed up on, man? They're surface dwellers. They were clearly from Shady Sands at one point or another, so they're going to worship her. What do you mean? It makes sense. Perfect sense. As it turns out, Moldaver is actually from the past, and they don't explain that either. And I know what you're going to say. Yeah, I know you know what I'm going to say because it's the clear answer, cryopods. But go ahead, pop off. Let's hear it. We'll get to that. But there's no reason why she would have been one of the people who was preserved. Money. Despite you thinking money doesn't buy you a spot in certain vaults, it does. Money. Also, she's a scientist. Who's to say vault tech were the only people with safe cryopods? I don't think that's the case. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. We don't know. Will it get explained in season two? I also don't know that. But it is not that hard to believe that Moldaver managed to get herself into a cryopod. So this stupid waste of time subplot that adds nothing to the story ends. Okay, adds nothing to the story. Yet once again, you were whining and crying about going into a vault and having it not be weird, crazy experiments. Okay, man, stay consistent. With Maximus stealing their fusion core, possibly killing all of them, getting in his power armor, beating the shit out of people for no reason except for humor, and then when they leave- Well, it Lu wasn't for humor. It was to save Lucy. He didn't know that she was safe because, as we've already established, he's kind of an idiot. Lucy convinces him to give them back the fusion core so they don't all die. And this is over the course of two episodes. They fucking wasted the audience's time so hard with this one. Okay. Anyway, back to episode six. Next scene, we get yet another flashback where we learn that Cooper's wife is just straight up evil. Not only do they not allow dogs in the vault for seemingly no reason, but she also- Man, on the final episode, I was hoping that the ghoul said, I've been waiting to ask you this for a long time. Why are no dogs allowed in the vault? I wish he said that, man. But anyway, back to the video. Sorry, it just reminded me. Actually manipulates him into believing that she's the victim for him going off to war and possibly dying, experiencing untold horrors. He probably has PTSD, but no, she's the victim because she had to wonder if he would come back home alive. Are you fucking <laughs> kidding me? This is Hillary Clinton all over again. Back to the present, we get another kind of pointless scene, admittedly it was cool at least, where Cooper is taken in front of the- Once again, just remember, you were upset that no one was defending the Super Duper Mart when the people who defend the Super Duper Mart came by, they captured him. And you're now calling it pointless. Just stay consistent. That's all I ask. Stay consistent. A president who's basically just a warlord who decided to call himself the president because he wants to restore law to the waste again. And Cooper sews his finger back on. I guess ghouls can just heal without radiation now. Cooper. All right, so he does know ghouls can heal with radiation, yet he's completely ignoring that fact when the ghoul is drinking irradiated water for some reason? Okay. Ends up taking responsibility for shutting down the organ harvesting operation and also admits to killing multiple people in Philly. I'm assuming this is so they don't find out about the chip in the enclave scientist's head. So then we get a kind of cool scene straight out of a western where he kills both of the sheriffs. Then over the course of two different flashbacks we get to see that Moldaver not only is from the past, and survived all the way to the present with no explanation. No, she wasn't frozen. Not she probably was, Brody. Not only that, but she was the leader of a company that was discovering how to create cold fusion, an unlimited energy source, which of course vault Tech bought her out. Yeah, so you'd think a very high-level scientist would have no way of getting cryogenically frozen, right? If you say so, man. I mean, we know about Mr. House. Mr. House has a bunch of inventions, that protected the strip. You love New Vegas. He was shooting nukes out the sky. Who's to say she didn't invent something for herself or, you know, was just friends with 
people in big industries like Mr. House and decided to get cryogenically frozen. Like, come on, dude. Also, it's not out of the realm of possibility for her to get a spot in a vault. I know she's anti vault tech, don't get me wrong, but she's probably very rich. Her company was bought out by vault tech. That means money. Because obviously capitalists don't want to end the resource war. And yeah, that's episode six. I told it largely out of order, but that's because six and seven might as well have been a big two-parter. So I'm not going to rate this one. Let's just go to episode seven. At the start of episode seven, we see two prospectors wearing NCR veteran ranger armor. And no Listen, I know he's going to be like, this is just surface level to get the normies hype. Dur, dur, dur. And sure fine and it worked on me i was hyped when i saw this trust i'm like let's go ncrw best armor in the game no they don't explain it this is purely just a visual reference to try and appease new vegas fans not to mention that's like the cheapest looking costume probably in this whole show i've seen cosplays better than that at least the scene becomes cool afterward as the ghoul is waiting for them cooper well I think it's supposed to show that they're related to the NCR. He's saying it was for no reason. No, I think it's to show that they are related to the NCR. Explains he killed the guy's older son, but the bullet hole in the letter landed perfectly on the spot pointing to where Moldaver is located. So, so now at this point in the show, you're supposed to think, oh, is he going to the NCR? That's why they wear that helmet. Glad to help. He threatens to kill the other son if he isn't given location, and, well, he does end up killing him. So, even though he didn't end up getting the location, I still thought it was a pretty entertaining scene. In a later scene, we finally get a follow-up oh, on the scene, head dude. situation. The squire's foot is horribly mangled, so he's probably going to die. And this piece of shit decides to lock up dog meat in a Nuka-Cola nah, yeah, cooler. True. That is, for real. What the fuck? I thought they were trying to make this character sympathetic. Then in a much later scene, he comes- In his defense, he did check for, you know, air to make sure dog meat could breathe in there, but not still. That is. Across the snake oil salesman that was saved in episode two, which I'm not even sure if I even mentioned that in this review, but who gives a shit? The point is the guy has a magical serum that gives the guy magical regeneration powers. And in a later scene, they imply he's turning into a ghoul. Why didn't they just make it the forced evolutionary virus? Again, you know, honestly, I was thinking about that. Like, what if it wasn't just some drug to make him into a ghoul? What if it is the FEV? We don't know. We shall see. It probably is just making him into a ghoul, but you never know. I brought this up earlier, but there's no super mutants in this show. But if that was a vial of FEV, that would have made perfect sense why his foot regenerated. Him turning into a ghoul doesn't make any. I don't know, whatever. This whole part was stupid. Moving on. Event well, it's like a weird hodgepodge drug. That guy doesn't really even know what he's doing. You know, he's a snake oil salesman, as he keeps calling him. He just might know that it heals. He doesn't know how, but he knows it heals. He does imply that he doesn't need to worry about radiation anymore. So he could be becoming a super mutant. He could be becoming a ghoul. It's either one. And in the beginning of the show, the snake oil salesman was like screaming, uh, remedies to heal your feet, remedies to heal your feet. When uh, Lucy was walking with the uh, Enclave guy, or maybe the Enclave guy was walking alone. I don't really remember fully. No, no, they were together. So in theory, the Enclave guy could have taken that medicine and became a ghoul and lived which probably is what he would have chosen to do had he known that that guy wasn't lying. Eventually, Cooper just so happens to come across the red rocket so he could save Dogme. Over hundreds of miles of wasteland he could have explored. God forbid they do a shout out to Fallout 4. God forbid they do such a thing. Disgusting. He somehow knew exactly where to go to find Dogmeat and save him. And then we get possibly the most Borderlands scene of the entire show, where Lucy and Maximus finally catch up to the Squire. He shoots at them and misses every fucking shot, which they just turn into a joke. Then he steps over a tripwire trap. Yeah, man. Fallout is a funny game. It's goofy. That's completely within the realm of possibility that, like, a new... Brotherhood of Steel Squire can't aim. He sucks at aiming. He doesn't have his glasses. He can't hit a shot. 
that's completely within the realm of possibility. Why are you acting like it's not? Jokes are big in the Fallout games. You should know this. Yep. That shoots a crossbow bolt into his neck, and he lives. And this is the part where they imply, oh, he's turning into a ghoul. Because now you can only kill ghouls by shooting them in the head. Not a retcon, though. Oh, is this where he's assuming or stating as a fact that you can only kill a ghoul by headshot? Because he said that earlier on, and I was trying to figure out why exactly he's saying that. Is this why? Because Thaddeus gets shot in the neck and he doesn't die? Like, he very recently took the drug that heals him. So that makes perfect sense for him to not be killable right there. Like, whether he's a ghoul or whether he just has, you know, buffed heels due to the fact that he just took that medicine, that makes perfect sense to me. And if he is a ghoul and he got shot in the neck, once again, ghouls can fight when they don't have an arm, when they don't have a leg, and when they don't have a head in the games. So that makes perfect sense. Oh, and then the dude just hands over the head. Doesn't matter if Maximus tried to kill him multiple times. No, they're buddies now. And well, Max no, Thaddeus hands him the head because he called the Brotherhood of Steel. Then Thaddeus learned, oh my God, I'm a ghoul. They're gonna kill me, I gotta get out of here. So he gives Maximus the head and runs away. That's why, not because they're best buds. Like, what do you want Thaddeus to do? Self-preservation. He's getting out of there. Smith now decides he's going to betray the Brotherhood for seemingly no reason. And so he gives Lucy the real head and he takes a smashed up head back to them with no plan. And then we get the most unintentionally funny moment in the show. Our two heroes kiss. For <laughs> I can't even fucking say it. I can't even get it out, guys. I'm losing my fucking mind. This is going to be my new reaction image every time I see Guys, I wish I could figure out what he's getting at, but it's probably just something like weird and racist. Propaganda. <laughs> okay, okay, I've calmed down. And yeah, before I get banned, let's just wrap this up. Episode 7 actually ends with a scene in Vault 33, but like I said, we'll cover that whole subplot at the beginning of the next episode. Mm -hmm. Alright, I will rate episode 6 and 7 as a pair since they're pretty much linked in all their plots. I'd give them a 5, even though they definitely still shit on the lore. These were probably the two most watchable episodes where you could just kind of turn your brain off and be vaguely entertained by what's going on. Again, still not good. I feel like people's standards for television are incredibly low that they would actually like this show because these are probably the two best episodes and they're just mediocre at best. It's kind of funny because I like notoriously hate TV shows, but I love this. So I'm kind of the inverse of what this lad's saying. Okay, with episode eight, I will finally wrap back around to the Vault 33 subplot. All right, all right, it's time. Get the big schnoz count ready. How many times do you think he's going to say it? Briefly sum up everything that happens. Like I said, for a while, this was the most interesting part of the show. We get to see Big Schnoz slowly <laughs> One. unravel the mystery of what the experiment was at this tri-vault system. We see that the residents of Vault 32 all killed each other years before the raiders got to that vault. And of course, they sowed the mystery of, okay, what did they figure out about Vault 31 that caused them to all kill each other? And so Big Schnoz does some digging. Two. Despite being the manlit nerd chud guy, he actually has more courage than anyone else. Which yeah, which is hilarious because in the first episode, you were flipping out, calling him a weakling, manlit like you just did, coward, etc. And we had to explain to you like, yeah, man, that's the point, you know, character growth. It's a thing in shows. And this dude right here, you were very upset, the big Chad man. You were very upset that he was not being a big alpha dog either. And, you know, it's the juxtaposition. I told you that in the first one. I got to tell you it again now. This big alpha male, who you probably want to sleep with your wife. It, actually, you probably don't have a wife. Never mind. But this big jacked alpha male is the real coward. And the little fella, the manlet, as you call him, big schnoz, if you will, is the true hero. And it sounds like you came around to him in the end, which I am glad because he is the best character in the show. But it just goes to show you, man, you got to let things rock. You got to chill. Stop looking for things to be so upset about. I actually really like that. He's probably the most. There you go. Likeable character in the show. Now, but imagine I if you were normal 
and this goes to, you know, what's this guy's name? Synthetic Man's viewers as well. If you guys were normal and you just went into the show like everyone else, a normal person, just trying to have a good time, vibing, relaxing, you would have probably been like, oh, Norm, cool, let's go, Pog. Just him like, ill, manly, coward, manly. You would have liked him. And as you can see, by the end, everyone loves him, including this guy. What I don't like is his cousin being a cuckold and raising another man's child. <laughs> there it is. And the blonde chick is from Vault 31, so she's one of the traitor people. And speaking of which, Big Schnoz finds three. out... Big Schnoz number three. That all of the people who were elected overseer in Vault 32 and 33 were from Vault 31. Which, if you recall, you pointed out the black guy talking about the water chip not working anymore. And he said, why did they do that? Well, they did it to set that up showing that overseers from vault 33 are not fit if you want something done you need an overseer from vault 31. that might be an incorrect saying of the phrase but you get it and i find this very interesting given the type of people who like this show think that the 2020 election was the most secure <laughs> in history you know of course but honestly what i find even i'm surprised more it took this long for like any uh trumpisms or you know just based u.s politics in general to come into uh, the fray but there it is took 50 minutes on uh, this second video or interesting was the chosen number of 33 those of you who are into conspiracy theories will know that number is associated with freemasons and that was definitely intentional as you'll see with the twist in vault 31. so anyway somehow all of vault 32 is seemingly cleaned up overnight and residents of vault 33 are to be moved back into 32 so that they can restore life to it and the experiment in the vaults can continue eventually big schnoz hacks into the over four sears computer and tries to communicate with 31 oh man this was such a good scene i said this previously but uh norm's scenes were like literally watching a fallout playthrough like a game playthrough and a high int small frame trait little fella just hacking his way through and is let inside and the big twist that we discover is that the corpo guy bud askin from the past is now a brain on top of a roomba are you fucking kidding me this what's the problem this is borderlands this is not fallout this nah that's that's fallout that's a very fallout thing to do and bud himself he seems like the type of guy to volunteer to be a brain in a jar. This is Borderlands. He's the manager. Uh, what do we got up here? I also forgot to mention that the experiment is a eugenics program to create the perfect managers for the future. That legitimately sounds like satire. LOL. The plan seems to have failed judging by the clearly dysgenic residents of Vault 33. This is the part where you call me racist. <laughs> I said in the beginning of the video, but I really do love the ongoing gag that he's not racist. Whatever. Anyway, so the big twist is that these vaults have not been operating for 200 years. They've been bringing people from the past out of cryostasis. Yes, this is another vault as cryogenic freezing. No, that wasn't just an experiment in Vault 111. No, apparently it's also in Vault 31. I so mean, why is that surprising? Lucy's dad turns out to also be And with that said, doesn't that give even more credence to the fact that Mold Daver was cryogenically frozen? From the past. That's all the Vault 33 subplot was leading toward. What a fucking disappointment. Anyway. If you say so, I thought it was great. Back to episode 8. We see Maximus getting interrogated. Okay, okay. So this is where he should realize that he was grilled for having his knight's clothing on. Let's see. By the Brotherhood of Steel. No, they don't bring up that he impersonated Knight Titus. That plot point, completely forgotten by the writers. But they... Brother, literally the first words from that dude up in the chair, I'm almost certain are, I see you are wearing your knight's reds. What are you talking about? Unless he's like being super neurotic and harping on the fact that they're like, your knight said you died, but here you are. Why are you not bringing that up? I think that's a beyond neurotic take because that dude up there, I forget his name, maybe Quintus, Elder Quintus. After this scene, keep in mind, the first thing he said is, I see you're wearing your knight's reds. After this scene, he's in the back 
and I'm going to paraphrase here because I don't remember the exact line, obviously. He says something to the effect of, this is not the first time a brother in your arms has fallen or has been in danger, has been harmed. Something of that nature. Of course, implying that uh, the other Brotherhood of Steel person who was supposed to go, they put their foot in the boot and they got all cut up and, you know, he was blamed. So he's implying that he was behind that. And then once again, the Elder is implying that he was behind the Knight's death. They do discover it's the wrong head, obviously, and he's about to be executed, but then the she-man <laughs> saves him by admitting that she placed the trap in her own boot. God, I hate this show. Anyway, so now we get to the big climax. Shouldn't he like the show? Shouldn't he like that the she-man was a coward and not manly enough to go fight? Shouldn't that be a net positive for this guy and his narrative? where the Brotherhood of Steel flies over to Moldaver and her band of raiders slash XNCR members. And the battle looks really fucking stupid. I know some of you are going to think, oh, this is cool. Dude, there's a Brotherhood of Steel guy in power armor with no gun who just like slaps dudes and slams them into a table. It's fucking dumb, dude. And it only gets dumber because, of course, Cooper follows them all the way here. And he makes a comment about a fatal flaw with T-45 power armor. And he wonders if T-60 fixed the flaw. Of course it didn't. So he just shoots them all in the weak spot and kills them instantly. This show is so dumb, it's unreal. This is basically a Marvel movie. No, actually, that's an insult to Marvel movies. This is a DC movie climax. So you guys seeing this scene right here? And he's very upset about it. If you recall, early on, he was like, I know some of you will say that gameplay is in canon, and he disagrees with that. My reply to him is, if gameplay is canon, which I agree with him, I think it is. Do you know what Vats is, young man? What if I told you the ghoul was most likely using Vats right there? At least that's the vibe. Obviously it's not, but it kind of seems like a callback to Vats, you know? Lock on to every single enemy, shoot them all in that direct spot, that specific pinpoint target that you're aiming at, and you kill the whole room. And also, it makes complete sense that the T-60 power armor would still have the same defect. And Cooper would know about the defect because he was in like actual war with actual non-stop like gunfire through and through. The Western Brotherhood of Steel has not been through a war like that or at least not this uh, grouping of them from what the show is saying and from what the, sh the games have been saying. So it makes perfect sense that that flaw would still be in there. If he wants to get upset and say that that's a retcon of some sort, okay, I guess. But remember, he just said gameplay is canon, right? Bear in mind, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, you can just shoot someone in power armor in their leg repeatedly and they die. In the show, the power armor is like you're a giant walking tank, right? So you can't have it both ways. If you're upset that the power armor in the show is you're a giant Iron Man walking tank that can just, you know, pick up people with your bare hands and slam them through a table, which he just cried about, then you cannot be upset if there's a weak spot to actually shoot through it. Because in the games, you can just shoot through power armor. You don't need to hit them there, obviously. You can hit them anywhere and they die. So pick a side. Either you want them to be shot through the power armor, or you don't. You can't have it both ways. But right now, you're sitting here picking both ways. Like I said, I can understand being mad that they retconned a little weak spot in the middle. But you need to stay consistent. What do you want to happen if someone's in power armor? They're just indestructible hulks? Nah, man. You can cry and say it's bad writing. I think it's great writing. Goes back. It's a callback to when he was in the army. When he was on the front lines. It makes perfect sense. He watched his brothers die on the line because of that defect. And he knew that they still would not fix it because money over safety. That's how it goes. And I know you're going to be like, capitalism bad. Wah, I hate that they're doing this. Wah, wah, wah. I get it. I know that's your prerogative. But brother, you said you wouldn't nitpick. All you're doing is nitpicking once again. But believe it or not, it actually gets worse. Because Lucy is also here. And she learns that her dad is the one who nuked Shady Sands. Okay. 
and they explain this with one final flashback where we get to see a meeting between all the executives of the mega corporations. They have their own Illuminati essentially right here. And of course, Cooper's wife represents Vault-Tec and she suggests to everyone that they should nuke America first because they can make a profit off of the apocalypse. Well, yeah, you sell fear. Guys, that might just be the dumbest plot point I have ever heard in any television show. They're trying to get investment from all the rich people surrounding them. Communists literally do not understand basic economics, supply and demand. You're telling me you want to kill off 99.999% of your customer base and you somehow think you're going to make a profit. They've established vault Tech is a trillion dollar company in this show. They don't explain what they sell. We might as well just say they're Amazon. They sell fear. That's honestly a better headcanon than anything else you could explain. They also retcon Mr. House and make him to be an idiot. He <laughs> says that he's not even sure the bombs will drop. When in New Vegas, it's established he knew it would happen. That's why he set up defenses I guess you could argue that the reason he knew the nukes would drop is because of this meeting. However, if he knew, wouldn't he have obtained the platinum chip in time pre-war, completely retconning New Vegas? Maybe. Maybe not. There's no answer to this one. If you want to harp on it and cry and say it's a retcon or say he's now stupid, you can. I think it's a reach personally to shoot down nukes that's why new vegas is in such great condition compared to every other major city in the united states mm -hmm. so again didn't do any basic fucking research <laughs> i mean honestly it makes sense that he would he would know they're dropping from this speech and just for the record this guy didn't say it but it is not confirmed that vault tech dropped the bombs it is only implied that they are willing to drop the bombs and it was said in order to get investment into vault tech you know get robco on board everyone else on board is it gonna come out that apparently they did drop the bombs maybe in season two i don't know but as of right now we don't know was it china maybe was it vault tech maybe we don't know my personal theory is that it wasn't vault tech because if it was vault tech you'd think that barb which is cooper's uh wife would have had the child with her when the bombs dropped right unless something happened to barb you know, before that, we don't know. Church, but oh, it doesn't break canon though. It doesn't break canon though. And man, they make this black woman so cartoonishly evil. On top of wanting to genocide the human race, she straight up says to the other executives of these companies that you can have some vaults and run whatever experiments you want in them. And that's how they explain all the crazy shit that goes down in the vaults. Mm -hmm. Holy fuck. You can't defend this scene. It's too <laughs> stupid. It doesn't work on any level. Kay. It doesn't pass basic logic. Kay. Anyway, back to the present. We learn what Moldaver's grand plan was. The Enclave scientists stole the formula, code, whatever. The thing that activates cold fusion, giving the wasteland unlimited energy. So yes, mm -hmm. she was a good guy all along. It also turns out she's a lesbian and was in love with Lucy's mom. And also she keeps- That is never said. What is blood going on about? <laughs> the only thing that is said is that they are friends, very good friends, and they are happy that humanity has been restored on the surface. They're not lesbian lovers, though if they are, that's pretty based. I'm kind of jealous of her mom, not gonna lie. Well, not in the ghoul state, but, you know, I'm a Moldaver fan, respectfully. Keeps her around as a ghoul, dude. This bitch is a psycho. So like I said- That is pretty crazy, though. Before Lucy's dad nuked Shady Sands because that would have been competition for vault Tech. Guys, I seriously can't take the show anymore. It was so painful. Well, I mean, vault Tech, they did all this because they wanted to be the ones to restore humanity. I don't think that's that far out of the realm of possibility when you realize how evil vault Tech is. Not just in the show, buddy. Even in the games, vault Tech's pretty evil. Watch it up until this point. So whatever, let's wrap this up really quick. So 
Lucy's dad ends up escaping, gets the power armor. Moldaver is bleeding out. So our heroes decide to follow him out into the unknown. The Brotherhood of Steel obviously captures Cold Fusion. So now they have unlimited power on the West Coast. Nice plan, Moldaver. You really thought that one through, you fucking idiot bitch. And the show <laughs> ends with Lucy's dad coming across uh. Vegas and it's dead. They killed Vegas too. I've seen some copium from people who weren't fucking paying attention, probably because they're bots, but you can clearly see the wall has been breached. The power is off. I guess after the events of New Vegas, the tunnelers overran everything and killed everybody, or maybe maybe the Legion blew up Hoover Dam. Yeah, I'm really interested to see what they do with New Vegas in season two. Like, is Mr. House just done? Like, what's up? I assume he's not. Because they clearly, you know, pan to him in the uh, throwback scene. I feel like he's going to be alive in season two. We'll see. Actually, I doubt the Legion will even get mentioned in season two because... Actually, speaking of the Legion, this is like a weird fan theory that I read, but I figured I'd say it since we're here. Um, some people are saying that that West Coast Brotherhood kind of absorbed the Legion. And it would make sense when you look at all their names. Like, why are, why are they all Latin? Thaddeus, Maximus, Quintus, you know? Why are they all Latin? And in one of the scenes, there is a yellow and red Brotherhood of Steel flag. And if you don't know, the Legion's flag is yellow and red. Is that actually true? I don't know, man. Probably not. But it was interesting. So I thought I'd bring it up. Too problematic. But yeah, they destroyed New Vegas. As if they didn't shit down the fans' throats hard enough. So yeah, is there any point to having a real conclusion? I'm sure this video already dragged on way too long. <laughs> you know exactly what I think of it. If this was non-canon, it would just be mediocre slop that doesn't even make sense on its own. There's multiple major plot holes, extreme conveniences, and just plain old bad dialogue, bad writing, pro-communist propaganda <laughs> that doesn't even make sense on a basic level. Uh -huh. Some of the most diverse casting I have ever seen, and I believe there's four interracial couples in this show as well. Not to mention Lucy is arguably a Mary Sue, and there's plenty of women in positions of power. They made a black woman not only like the lead executive of Vault Tech, but also a genocidal maniac. So we're leftists, the real racists all along. That's certainly worse than anything I would ever write. But really, the worst thing of all is that it just craps all over the original games. And if that doesn't bother just barely bother you, then you're not a fan of Fallout. Period. The fact that there are a bunch of huge YouTubers shilling this show, including one guy famous for mentioning The Message, yet the he message. never brings it up when talking about this show. I don't have to name him. You know exactly who it is. I need you guys to name him for me. I'm not familiar with who he's talking about. I didn't even know about Synthetic Man until the first video. I honestly thought the first Synthetic Man video I watched was like just going to be like a normal critique. I had no idea he was like this neurotic and insane, but you know, here we are completely sold out dude a lot of the people you thought were based red pilled right wing <laughs> whatever uh no they're just oh, grifters man. before i end this, this dude's so tribal i understand why he likes new vegas though you know you get to pick a fact and you get to be tribal it's fun to be tribal every now and then he takes it to and like too high of a level though i think video i want to throw another shout out toward the arch cast and kretosis for being very critical of this show Another shout out to, shout out to the people who agree with me. Everyone who disagrees about, you know, the vibes. E for mentioning me in his video and anybody else who proved that they have critical thinking skills and they're not being paid to shill a fucking Amazon show. Even if we don't I wish I was being paid, honestly. I don't see eye to eye politically on a lot of things because I'm self-aware enough to know my views are pretty extreme, but the important thing is we all stand together in gatekeeping fallout from the fucking normies who want to destroy everything because they don't give a flying fuck. They are completely mindless consumers. They do not care about the franchise, about the characters, about the lore, about the story, or even the basic themes. You will never be a fan of Fallout if you like this show. That's about it. See you next time, guys. All right. Well, man, you know, there's really not much to say that I haven't said already throughout the whole video. War. War never changes. And Synthetic Man. Synthetic Man being the silliest lol cow on YouTube. That never changes either.